what we've learned about a lot of new different types of energy and work today, but we have yet to really figure out what we do with this stuff. So we're going to talk about that by way of an example. I have the medicine ball. I'm holding the medicine ball over my head. If we set the zero line at the floor, class, what do we know about the gravitational potential energy of the medicine ball right now? A little higher. We know it is positive. Right now, what is the gravitational potential energy? I'm uh, sorry, we did that one. What is the kinetic energy of the medicine ball? Christine. No, the kinetic energy is actually not going to be positive. Help her out here, Eric. Go ahead. Because it's not moving. Remember, kinetic energy is the energy of motion, one half mv squared. The velocity is zero. So right now, we have gravitational potential energy, positive, and zero kinetic energy. Watch what happens when I drop it. What happened to the gravitational potential energy as the medicine ball went down? Hannah. How did it change? How did the height change? Right, so it decreased in value. So the gravitational potential energy as the medicine ball is falling decreases. What happens to the kinetic energy as it's falling? Oh, it, increases. it increases. So what you have here is you have a conversion of energy. We start out with gravitational potential energy. As the object falls, that gravitational potential energy decreases, but it gets converted into kinetic energy. It's the concept of conservation of energy, conservation of mechanical energy. And it's true whenever you have no friction. For example, there it was flying through the vacuum that you can breathe. What I have right here is a rubber band. A rubber band is a spring. A spring is something we could store elastic potential energy in. So I could take the spring and I could put energy into it. And we now have energy stored in the spring as elastic potential energy. And I can convert that energy into gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy. Let's just catch that. I don't know. <laughs> So notice, I'll take it back when you change. Notice what I had there is I had elastic potential energy stored in the spring, and then I converted it over to gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy. So again, conservation of energy. We're converting from one type of energy to another type of energy. We can also go through this example, which I like to call the dance of the pendulum, which you'll understand shortly. So we have a pendulum. It's going back and forth, back and forth. If we set the zero line right here at the bottom point, and I take the object and I bring it all the way up here, class, what do we know about the gravitational potential energy of the mass right now? It's positive. What do we know about its kinetic energy right now? It's zero. And when I'm going to let go of it, it's going to start to go down. What happens to its gravitational potential energy? It decreases its kinetic energy. It increases until we get to this point right here. What's its gravitational potential energy? Zero. So it's all kinetic energy. So notice what we have here is we have a dance. We have gravitational, kinetic, gravitational, kinetic, gravitational, kinetic, gravitational, kinetic, gravitational, kinetic, it's two partners. Dancing back and forth, gravitational, kinetic, gravitational, kinetic, gravitational, kinetic, gravitational, kinetic, gravitational, kinetic, gravitational, kinetic, yes. I see a dance of the pendulum, a dance of the different types of energies. That's right, you jaded teenagers, you just see a pendulum, but I, I see the dance. Okay. <laughs> so, conservation of energy is true whenever there is no friction. Technically, it's called conservation of mechanical. Yeah. Is this a law or just a. Wait for it. Conservation of mechanical energy. The three types of mechanical energy we were talking about today are all different types of mechanical energy. So whenever you have no friction, energy is conserved, and you get mechanical energy initial equals mechanical energy final. And that is our final boxed equation for today. That the mechanical energy initial equals the mechanical energy final whenever you have no friction. <laughs>